what a busy day. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And this is September 30th. It's only Monday. Oh my God, I exerted some energy today, folks. If you didn't know, I do a lot of different things. I post news pre-market on Twitter and over at Discord group. I also am over at Discord every day, folks, from 9.30 to 4 o'clock. We are finding hot charts and we are setting up scout plays. We are getting those probable movements from one support to the next support and grabbing those. And folks, stocks like Caper, we were playing that for five days last week and we were playing it today. It just keeps hitting new highs. Well, I like to share hot penny stocks with you. That's what I trade. Well, I hope they're hot. <laughs> I trade penny stocks, stocks under five bucks that you can find on every market. So if you don't like the OTC, those penny stocks, you don't have to play. But there are lots of them on the NASDAQ, on the New York Stock Exchange. You can play any of those. You get all the benefits of a major exchange stock, right? It doesn't matter what its price is. It's on the major exchange. So I've got one I want to share with you today that I am pretty bloody excited about, folks. This is a Chinese company. Let's put that out front because that's a catalyst. Uh, Caper, the one we're playing, that is a Chinese stock. Duo, another one we're playing. Been bouncing around. When you're scalping, folks, bounces are the dream world. You just keep taking $100, $200 over and over again through the day. And you know where you're getting in and where you're getting out. So you're not even sweating. You're in these plays for minutes at a time, not wasting your day watching the stock go wherever. So I saw this stock. I saw the chart and oh man, it was doing normal like anything does. And then all of a sudden it did something nobody does. And it really looks enticing to me. And I'm not going to say anything more except we could get some serious gains out of this. 500%, 1000%, I don't know, folks. I'll let you look at it and I'll tell you what I see. But as soon as you look at it, you're going to see something too. So this is GSIW. Garden Stage Limited. As I said, it is a Chinese company working out of Hong Kong, but Hong Kong belongs to China again. You do know that Britain had to give it back. Their 100 year time limit was over. So they finished the day at a buck 60. Whoa, up 32.2% today. I'm expecting a lot more. <laughs> She is on the NASDAQ, so it comes with all those benefits. You don't have to pay for any transactions. They're free. You can trade pre-market, after-market. Can't do that with the OTC. And you don't need any special qualifications. Just get in there and trade. You have the right to trade. Just remember, change your order, period. It's not a day trade. That's in there by default. Lots of people put in an order and say, it didn't work for me. You didn't change that to extended hours or pre-market or whatever your broker uses. Change it and it'll work. And if it doesn't work, get that order out of there because as soon as the bell goes off, it's live and who knows what's going to happen. So what is this company about? Well, it's pretty easy to explain. They call themselves China Insurance Group over here. And that's not exactly what they do at all. Garden Stage Limited, through its operating subsidiaries, is a Hong Kong-based financial service provider principally engaged in the provision of placing and underwriting services, securities dealings, and brokerage services, as well as asset management. That's half true. When I dove into their information on their website, which is all in Chinese, had to convert it over, I found out they're a split company. There are two companies here. They are... I win Securities Limited and I win Asset Management. And we were just reading about I win Asset Management. But this is the big part up here. Now, this is important. This all has to do with China. China just had their China rate cuts, which is affecting all sorts of things over there. Their property market, the stock market, um, banks, all sorts of things are changing over there. And there's lots of stocks running over here. Well, this company has a stock exchange. Uh, Iwin Securities Limited was established in 2017 by a group of Hong Kong shareholders who've been engaged in security business for many years and have extensive experience. The office is located in Hong Kong. The company is licensed by the Securities Futures Commission, the SFC, we got the SEC, to conduct type one dealings in securities and is an exchange participant of the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Our company mainly provides security traded services in Hong Kong. Specific services are as follows. They deal with their 
uh, investment securities and clients to provide stock trading services. They have public offerings. They deal with old shares, new shares. They do all that stuff. So this just in itself is a catalyst. What they do and where they're from and what's just happened in China, that in itself is a bloody catalyst. So this is a big deal. But there is more to consider, like the news. We got three pieces of news here, and I'm going to tag into each one, but really you can see what's going on. Uh, this is on the 13th of September, the 13th of September, and the 16th of September. So this all just recently happened. I think this happened right around the same time, maybe just before the Chinese rate cuts. But taking a peek at each one of these, great, I lost my highlights. I remember what I need to read. Uh, the first one here. I win securities, a wholly owned subsidiary of Garden Stage Limited, has been in advanced discussions with the derivatives trading units of several investment banks, such as China International Capital Corporation Limited and the J.P. Morgan Chase Bank National Association, with regard to Iwin's distribution of their derivative products, including, but not limited to, participation notes, options linked to the performance of a share underlying stock. So, <laughs> it's very complicated because it's financial, it's kind of dry, can't even throw up any bloody pictures for you, sorry. But this is one of their agreements. Then we've got another agreement, this one lost its highlights too. Cooperation agreement with ZZC. The company, Garden Stage, announced today that various strategic initiatives had been agreed with ZZC International Limited, a company incorporated in Hong Kong. ZZC is one of the main executing entities of the High Pin China campaign, of which the main focus is to help Chinese brands and companies go overseas. And that's a big deal with China. When my, when I was still married, when my wife was buying all this stuff from China, there was no shipping. They passed it off to us as free because the government was paying for anybody selling stuff on Amazon or eBay to anybody outside of China. The government was covering the shipping expenses. That's how big of a deal they want because they know the rest of us are pigs. We love to spend our money on stuff and they make a lot of stuff in China. These tr strategic initiatives cover major financial topics such as capital markets consulting, security transactions, introduction of clients, family offices, and external asset management. And the last one is pretty much like the one we just read. Oh, I get my highlights. Lucky me. One out of three. Hopefully we trade better than that. The company announced today that multiple strategic cooperation agreements have been reached with Indicator Global, an investment advisor firm registered with the U.S. SEC. So now they're working with a, a uh, organization that is registered with the SEC here in America. The cooperation agreements cover introduction of clients, derivatives, consulting, external management, blah, blah, blah. And there is a possible formation of a joint venture. So now we've got catalysts out ahead of us. We've got all these business deals that they're doing. All these companies are backing them up, sharing clientele. So they've just opened up all these other windows of clientele, two-way street. Plus, they've got being Chinese, that is a huge catalyst. And now they tell us there's a possible joint venture in the future. There's a lot going on here. And I want you to remember all this when we look at the chart, because this chart is something else, folks. We ain't seen anything like this before. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Hot. We got a little, about five times as much as she's been doing on an average every day over the last 30 days, 4.3 million. Today she did almost 23 million. Share structure, cross our fingers, oh yeah. We've got a low outstanding share count of, let's call it 16 million, and our float is going to be less than that. Subtract whatever the insiders own. We don't know. That's going to be our float. It's, it's going to be a low float, folks. It already is low-ish. So we've got ourselves an excellent float here. Market cap for the company is currently about 19 million. Financials. Is this company making any money? Really? I was expecting something more over here. I really was. 
I did not look at these. No, I didn't. I had a lot to do today and I just had to jump on over here. So over the last three years, putting three zeros behind any of these numbers, three years ago, they did 2.2 million. Bumped that up to 3.1 million. And here at the end of March, they did 1.3 million. Not very exciting. Quarterly reports, we don't get any because they're from the major exchange. That don't mean that they don't have them. They're just not showing up here. This is the OTC markets. They do have every single stock on the OTC market. Warrants, rights, they got everything here. ETFs, they got it all. But there can be glitches, empty spots in the information. There's other places to get it. But this is a good place to do all of your research initially. Let's take a look at the balance sheet for GSIW. Carrying those three zeros over here are bank, cash, and cash equivalents. We got about nine million. Total assets, about 17 million. And total liabilities is less, far less, 7.2. So we do have equity in this company of 9.2 million. Now, I say this over and over again, but one of the ways you can figure out what's the price of the stock supposed to be? Well, there's a lot of ways to figure it out, but on assets, if you take all the shares, we got roughly 16 million and divide it into this, your total stockholder equity, that gives you a price. 16 million into 9 million, mm, that'd be a lot further down, wouldn't it? That's just one way, just saying. Let's take a look at our disclosures. Well, we had a new investor come in. An SC13D or an SC13G are new investors big investors. Somebody who buys enough shares, they become part owner. Now, I can't remember which is which, a D or a G. One is a silent investor. The other one has a voice and wants to have a say in what goes on. Now, I think it's worth diving into these, seeing how much somebody's invested because you never know. Could be a big deal. So, at the very top, we've got the investor's name. This is Oriental Moon Tree Limited. They just got themselves an even 11 million shares here. And that's written up a little differently than I'm used to seeing. Whoa, maybe that's why. Look at that, folks. Over 70% of the company was just purchased. Now, I did scroll down through the rest of this to see if change of control was mentioned. It wasn't. Though that doesn't change the fact we have a new majority shareholder. By all means, Oriental Moon Tree Limited just bought 70% of this company. That, too is now a catalyst. And what other filings we got here? We got some 144s, nothing big there, and then we're all the way back to August. So we've got nothing else to consider. We got enough. We just got another catalyst. First, she's a Chinese company working in the financial industry, specifically with the stock exchange over there in Hong Kong. She's just made multiple alliances with lots of different companies around the world, including here in America. Some of the biggest banks, J.P. Morgan Chase National. So that's huge. Plus, they said they have a joint venture somewhere on the horizon. Holy cow, folks, this is looking good. Now, the fundamentals aren't all that great. I'll give you that. But I play the charts. Honestly, folks, if the chart is hot, all I'm looking for is wood to throw on it. I got a whole handful of wood here. If it is hot, it will burn. And everything here is set up, folks, and the chart is what it's all about. So let me show you what I've been talking about all this time. Now we get to the fun stuff, the stuff that got me excited. We are over here at my free trading platform. It's the only trading platform I've got is Thinkorswim. We are looking at ticker GSIW Garden Stage. Now, I've opened it up to the one-year, one-day chart so you can get an idea of what's going on over the last year. We had a high here, a 52-week high of just under $16, $15.99. And then we kind of averaged out right in this area here at, let's call it $740, right in this vicinity. Then she took a big leap, jumped up here to about $12, and then fell really hard. And we had some bounces in here, but these... Bounces aren't being justified by this chart. Let's come down to the six month, four hour view. Buckle up folks, ready? All right, this is what we're looking at, who cares? I wanna look at this, closer. All right folks, look at this. This is what happened and there is no news. You, we've gone through everything here. Nothing here is corresponding to anything we've looked at. All we know is that this is a Chinese company that's got lots of good news, lots of good new alliances and partners, if you will, with a joint venture on the horizon. 
The stock is jumping around like a, like a monkey on fire, a kangaroo, you know. This thing fell from $12 all the way down to here to $225. Took about three days. She went sideways and she jumped from $250 up to $1070. One day later, she was all the way back down here to a buck 15. And she's been going sideways. Now it's a little different here, but I want you to see the bigger picture. Let me open this up just a wee bit more. All right, let's look at it like this. We are rounding it up right now. We've got our strong MAs that are starting to level off here. We're going to break through that. Now, I don't think you should get in yet. No, no, no. I'll show you where you should probably get in, where I'm probably going to get in. But look with me here. This looks like a 3D double bottom, a big W, right? You can see it and it's going to come back up. Where? Well, follow this line down. I can actually grab one there, bring this down. We would expect this to climb up to there to give us the full W of a double bottom. Could even go higher. The point is a double bottom is a bullish pattern that you normally get a run off of. And how far does a run normally go off of a double bottom? Normally the depth of the double bottom. This double bottom is going from $10 down to, let's call it $2, eight bucks. So if she was to rise up to here, $7, that would be a nice gain from a buck 60 right now. And then push another $8, we'd be hitting our high of $15, which is what we were at a year ago which is in the realm of possibility. So this could be a ripper if this plays out as the mother of all double bottoms. So I like the way that is set up. Now, we've got a real nice price here and you say, okay, look at this price, a buck 60. Well, we're not getting in down here, folks. No, no, no. She is underneath all of these strong MAs. We got a 50 or 200 haul, which is just as strong as our 200 day MA up here. So I am not getting in down here because she can bump her head on any one of those and just fall right back down. Plus, I've got a very strong support up here at the bottom of this first fall. So my safe zone is to get above this strong support and then go up right here. Let, let me zoom in so I can show you here. Oh, it's going to be tough. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Right there is a bar. You see how I'm bouncing on it. It's tough to see at this angle, but that's where I got my green line from. This came up and stopped and fell back down. I want to be at that point. Let's back it out so you can see it a little better. Hold on. I can fix it. I hate charts sometimes, but I love them most of the time. So right here, there is my entry above that support on top of that bounce right there. I want to get over that bounce, which is going to put me where? On top of the 50, on top of the 200, definitely on top of the 20, pushing towards the 200. And when everything is turned up underneath me, this could run. But look, folks, we didn't wait for a setup. This fell and ricocheted. Look at that angle. Look at that angle. Now, right now, we've got a nice scallop going, a nice curve. I see an angle there. So things are set up for a normal breakout. Then we got this possibility of a humongous double bottom. And you also have recovery, folks, just to get back up to where she was. Recovery, just to get back to normal, whatever brought her down in the first place. So there's a lot of reasons this stock could climb. And no matter which one you take, it's huge profits. We're talking at least 300% gains here. At least could be a heck of a lot more. Let's come on down to our 20-day, one-hour view. And of course, if you didn't gather this, folks, all of these lines here are my supports and resistances. This is where I could trade on the way up if I didn't want to ride it all the way up because I didn't believe it was going to go all the way up. I could get in right here. That'd be a perfect spot. Jump in and most likely it is going to climb until it hits this line right here. Then it may fall back. But that's a most likely probable move. And that's what we play over in Penny Boys, probable moves. And that goes from 246 up to 332, but you always come down a little bit because it could bounce before it hits it. So let's say 225, and we're coming in at 250. I'm sorry, 325 and 250. Wow. 
thousand shares of any stock at any price will get you ten dollars for every penny it moves that right there is over a seven hundred dollar play that right there so you could jump in here and get out right there take your seven hundred dollars and not have to worry about a twelve hundred dollar play you would put a stop loss in down here underneath the support where we got in i would find another bounce right there <laughs> wrong tool let me hit that button for us right here you see that little itty bitty red one right there yep i would find that draw a line and that not that but underneath that because that is where it falls to and bounces up so you don't want to put it there it could hit it come underneath that that's our stop loss so that would be a safe play if you just wanted to play a thousand shares of this stock up to mm, 325 get in there at three uh, sorry two <laughs> 245 yeah somewhere around there maybe i got my numbers mixed up but you see what we're looking at there folks that play right there but i'm expecting this to get momentum once she starts crossing these folks we got our 200 she gets on top of the 200 it's a normal breakout just her everyday average breakout which we're always looking for and it could just keep running and then china comes out with something or i don't know why is it doing all of this maybe that same magic comes into play and bam this thing runs so my point is you want to watch this stock she's cheap now but don't get in now i think it's safest to get in up here at about did i say two and a quarter before no no i meant to say 240 245 that would be a safe place to get in even if you just ride up to the next one beautiful play but i think it's good for a long run let's come on down to the uh, 15 minute five day all right now it's looking like a normal chart what can we expect to happen here well look at that 50 day wow she was falling hard folks now she's slowing down she leveled off right there she got flat our 200 was falling very fast leveled off and has gotten flat right in this area now we have our 50 and our 200 totally flat here and of course our 9 and our 20 are mixed up in there it's all mixed up it's a knot it's supposed to be nice and evenly combed. So we got to get the tangles out. That's what's happening right now. The tangles are being pulled out. Once the tangles get pulled out, you can start seeing long stretch bars coming out of this. Like you see, and these should start getting bigger and bigger. These should start ripping, folks. That's just my opinion. I don't know nothing. Just because they call me the wizard doesn't mean I actually know anything beyond what I know. But this is looking righteous to me, folks. Everything is readable in the physical terms to me, and the digital world just responds to my physical terms here. This entanglement is getting untangled right now. Her bars are getting bigger. The lines are starting to grow. Uh, you know, I haven't even looked at the oscillators. Our oscillators here are weak they are weak right now they are falling aftermarket is pulling it down but i wouldn't be surprised to see a bounce off of this 200 it just got detangled went up it needs to find its footing first it didn't do that it needs to bounce off this 200 once twice something like a basketball once it knows it's solid i can build here it's gonna go so watch the bounces here and i kept this up to show you it's got aftermarket activity going on right now which you can get from major exchange stocks and you can't get from the OTC. And it's a Chinese company. So this company is related to the, the one that's over there in the Chinese market. Now, I'm not that kind of trader, so I don't know exactly how they're trading over there on that stock affects this stock. I don't know if they're totally separate or there is some magical connection. I really don't. But I do know there's a lot going for this stock. I do know that she's just untangled. All of our MAs have gotten level. She is starting to bounce. I think now is the time to look at it. If you want to do some more due diligence, be my guest. <laughs> Outside of that, watch the chart. Volume comes into this, like right there. See, we had no volume here. Volume is creeping in after market, pre-market. Lots at the beginning of the day. Pretty strong at the end of the day. Folks, I'd be watching this tomorrow morning. Oh, yes, I would. So that's what I got to share with you. And as you can see, I had lots of excitement, but you got to blame that on Penny Boys. Penny Boys got me revved up, folks. I swear to God. Everybody has a question. I throw eyeballs on there to let them know that I see your question. I'm looking at the chart. I'm getting your SNRs. 
yeah, I think that's a good entry. I'd probably drop that stop loss a little more if I were you. You know, I can't tell anybody what to do, but I have an opinion and I'm glad to share it with you. But know that it is an opinion. But in saying that, we got some coaches over there, folks, that knew their stuff. Yes, we do. So if, if we find a weak link in your trading, I may not have the answers, believe that or not. I may not have the answers, but we got somebody over there who does. And just for a few bucks, no, we don't do everything for free, but we do a lot for free. We got that free members page you can come on. I do these videos for free. But if you want some one-on-one -on -one serious training, you know, just to fix a glitch in your trading, we can do that for you. So in saying that, come join me over at Penny Boys, folks. I'm there every day. <laughs> I drink lots of coffee. I'm there every day from bell to bell. And I would love to see you there, folks. Come trade with the wizard and chat with me. I'd like to get to know people who are watching these videos. That's always fun. Remember, folks, more you know, more you're going to grow. See ya.